Mike and the Moon Pies is a band. Mike Moon, uh, who is the lead singer, is Mike Moon Pie. He's Legal a name. Great, Mike he's a great Pie. man. I met him. Uh, if, if you're like I said, a regular listener, you know this because we saw Jason Boland uh, back in like March or February or whatever it was in Iowa City, and Mike Moon Pie and the Moon Pies were the openers. And so I talked to him after the show, and he was a really nice guy. We just told I just told him about how. We have our site and everything. We're just trying to promote the best country music that we can and trying to get everyone's name out there. And he was really nice, and we chat for a while. And Kevin was in the front row because he likes standing in crowds, whereas I hate it. And I fucking like standing in the back of crowds because I don't like people being by me. Yeah, it is but, not uh, totally accurate because I do hate crowds. I hate them so much. Yeah, yet you and Jay always want to stand as close to the stage as possible, when I, whereas I like standing in the back. Um, it depends on how many beers I've had. <laughs> no. um, but yeah, so they're just a fucking phenomenal band. I know, like saving country, like their saving country music is a bigger audience and gets their name out there, obviously. But so they're getting kind of getting the views that they should be. Finally, they're getting the respect that they deserve, and hopefully, they get uh, more out there because their latest album, Steak Night to Prayer Rose, is an amazing. Fucking yeah, and I so. think that when when it got released, it started to get a pretty decent amount of traction because like I don't know, you know, I don't know too much about them and their rise and you know all, all of that and their exposure and things like that. But I, I do remember when it got released, there were a lot of people that were talking about it because there was a lot of people talking about how this is one of the best albums that's going to even come out this year. Like remember it check it out, all, all that stuff. And I, I think it was a really good moment for them. And it's a great album, like you said. So it's certainly deserving of that, you know, of that praise and, and, and remembering it that way. And it, it's really great because they're, they're so like traditional sounding. They're one of those bands that you could listen to an album. And other than the, you know, recording sound quality, you'd be like, this could have been recorded. I don't know when, and, and I really yeah, love that sound. Which means it's out of date because pop is the new country. Stupid. There wasn't a yes. single bass drop, and for that reason, I'm out. <laughs> uh, it's like Shark Tank. It's like, and for that reason, I'm out. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> um, but yeah, so they're phenomenal. Let's just hop into the toop tune. Um, number 10 is The Worst Thing. When I met you, you with my best friend. I got to thinking about what might have been So I took my chances and we danced to that song Is that the worst thing that I've ever done? I begged and I cheated, I lied and I stole I'm taking about Cane Brown. <laughs> <laughs> um, got him! <laughs> got him! Um, no, this is on your top ten, so I'm not sure actually what this was about. You I don't know take yourself well, just one second. <laughs> <laughs> so, Kevin, have you heard of the one about the, the, the Jew and the... Oh, just trying to pass time. Uh, yeah, this oh. is one that I couldn't find the lyrics for, and now that we're sitting here, I can't think of <laughs> what it is. All right, it's good. Listen to it. Number nine. <laughs> uh, oh. yeah. This is one I don't know, so I can't help you with that one. Um, number nine, though, is Damn Straight. I see you move yourself up to Nashville, and I got you fail us a thing. Well, in Merlin, looking at you, I'm talking about Uh, I love this one just because, well, one, it's just clever the way it is. It's damn straight, and it's spelled like George Strait's name. Yeah. And so the lyric is damn straight, damn Hank, damn Jones. Like, it's 
It's just this kind of like kind of a sarcastic damn straight and it's not like fuck these guys they're not country it's like damn them for being so good at what they're doing and like getting their messages across and like i think it's like damn trit for having all those stinking hits and it's just like all these it's just really good because it's kind of him being like damn you guys for having these songs that mean so much to me like kind of thing and it's just a really clever song from one of their older albums and so i've loved it i love this one and i had to include it on the top 10 um number do you have anything to add to that one uh no sorry i'm trying to find what the because i i'm getting the worst thing in my brain because it's the song where he says like is that the worst thing i've ever done or something like that oh yeah it's off of steak night and i I, i'm blanking on the specific things um yeah so i I found a review isn't it kind of like a sarcastic one of like is this really the worst thing i've ever done kind of thing it's more like it's a somber like as because like i just pulled up a review and i think this says good things this is a review by Oh, review. The review. Okay, fine. Um, the, uh, fuck, I just scrolled up to the top. Like, okay, uh, it says, a sentimental ballad that reflects on uh, a life of questionable choices. The worst thing is empowered by the appearance of a harmonica and the addition of an accordion further highlighted in a dark bridge that serves as a smooth transition to a new key. So it's, it's you know, it's this somber, I feel, kind of deal about how he's, you know, he's done a lot of poor things, but as he's gone, like, is this the worst thing? Is that the worst thing? It's just, you know, reflective. Mm. And I yeah. wish I could find the lyrics so I could point them out better, uh, yeah. but they don't exist on the internet, apparently. Yeah. Mike and the Moon Pies, Poop Pies. Mike <laughs> and the Moon Pies is, it's like a huge band, so some of their stuff is more difficult to find on the internet, which sucks, but they're fucking great. Yeah. Yeah. Damn it. Um, yeah, I mean, because they have, what, four albums and an EP out? Like, I didn't really, like, there are bands that will be like, let's do this, this, then this week, but we'd only heard, like, their latest two or three albums, and then we go on, they have, like, six albums. Like, what the fuck were these yep. other ones? Where were these ones? Yep. How did I not know these existed? So these, the Mike and the Moon Pies was one of those where I go on, and they had two albums I hadn't heard before. I was like, oh, shit, I got some sh- listening to do. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> And they're great, um, and their sound is great, and that's—I yeah. mean—that's the other thing too about them. That's it's, you can listen to a whole album, you know, start to fish and start to. Oh my god, my brain start is start to bro- fish. In. <laughs> I want to Friday start to fish. Okay. My brain is broken. Okay. I'm tired. Um, but you can listen to I'm an album tired. from start to finish, and it's it's got the consistent sound that is good from just the whole the whole way through, like not in a monotonous way, but in a they're they're just good and they make good music. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah, so number eight is The Hard Way. I knew I couldn't be your family man. I just had to get my hands on your body. I knew I couldn't take care of you. Cause I do whatever I want to do for my mom. I was going to say, make a dick joke. Do it! Um, no. Uh, <laughs> I know, I was trying to think of one, but I too am tired. <laughs> uh, so this is a song where, so the, the, the hard way is about, he has the line in there, like, but you found out the hard way, and it's basically about, you know, him, and, you know, like the beginning talks about with him saying, like, I, uh, I do whatever I want with my money, but you found out the hard way. And so just basically him treating his lady wrong, uh, and she finds out that he's not that great in a variety of instances the yeah. hard way yeah yeah fucking they, some of their songs lyrics are just so fucking good i remember uh actually when i was listening to it the song road crew came on obviously because i was listening to all their shit mm-hmm. and uh 
I remember seeing something on Twitter, like Mike Moonpie really snarkily kind of responded to someone's tweet where it's just like, I feel like all their songs are just like about touring. And it's just like, yeah, because that's what we do a lot of. <laughs> and, it's almost like, like most of my life is uh, taken up by touring. Yeah. And so I love that their lyrics are very just kind of about playing music. It's not like it's not like Tim McGraw living on his fucking $20 million mansion, you know, land. He's not out. He's not out there singing like. Oh, when I'm a farmer and I live poor. It's like, dude, you've been rich since 1983. Like, go fuck yourself. So I like that they <laughs> sing up. A... Jesus Christ. <laughs> that one took me over. In the <laughs> in the words of Tyler Childers, uh, it took me over from the toenails to the crown. That was, whoo, <laughs> goddamn. I think you're possessed on that one. I, uh, I have had some fucking sinus shit going down lately. Yeah, and I will randomly because like you, you know you know what happens when you got to sneeze you just you feel it and you sneeze. I have I been having it in my life, <laughs> 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 but I've been having it where like I can feel it building and then it goes mm-hmm. from like oh I have to sneeze to like oh my god the inside of my face hurts <laughs> 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 and then I sneeze. <laughs> Nice. Um, <laughs> what the fuck are we talking about? I don't know. <laughs> oh, about how 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 their songs are actually relatable. How yeah, like Tim McGraw and Toby Keith are all singing like, "Oh, the hard life of you know being poor." Right, it's well, like it, you haven't had that in twenty. Yeah, years, and it so. and it goes so. to show you know it's you can tell that they write these songs because they wouldn't be getting someone to write a bunch of songs about being on the road for them. They're actually yeah. writing them themselves. Yeah, exactly. Um, number seven, getting high at home. I still love it now at the beer joint, throwing a couple back, spending my money on the jukebox, playing guitars and Cadillacs. But now I don't need no bartender. I like this. So this song kind of reminds me of, uh, you know, Working Men Blues. College by, Men. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but Working Men Blues by Merle Haggard where he says in that song, you know, I like to drink a beer at Tavern and sing a little bit of them Working Men Blues. And so when yeah. he's saying, like, I like to drink drink beer at the at the juke joint or whatever the word says that he says um, and get high at I home. I like drinking down at the juke But I also jo- like it because in my older, older days, I like the idea of just, fuck it, I want to stay at home. And yeah, so, exactly. so him just saying, like, I like to go out and have beers and get high at home. And so it's just like, yeah, just have your own time, chill at home. And it's just, uh, it's yeah. good. And I do like, like you said, like the, the pacing of the song and the way that their show is like, yeah. burp, like, I don't know. It's nice. I like yeah. it. Well, yeah, I love it because especially at our age, we're in our late twenties now. And it's funny just being like where it used to be like, it's nine o'clock bars. Now let's go. Yeah. We're closing it down. We're going to be out there till three. And nowadays it's just like, Oh, it's already eight thirty. I guess let's just get drunk here and go to sleep. <laughs> exactly. Oh, well, I guess I'm not going out today. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. And especially me living at home again, I haven't gone out to get drunk in. Uh, I genuinely don't know. Last time I lived out there, <laughs> out in Iowa, it's I, probably the last yeah, time I've, I've been. been drunk, uh, right? I've been finding out why happy hours exist because <laughs> it's so much better to be like, I'm going to come from work, have a couple drinks, and then go home and then be done with the day. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Oh, actually, I lied. Last time I was drunk was the pregame Medicine Stone. That was it. That was last time I was drunk, which I got a little that, too drunk. That was drunk. Know. That that was yeah, what that was, I would describe. That was as that drunk. was college. That was college drunk. Like unbelievable levels of drinking. Uh, what was that beer called? That shitty fucking beer. Frio six point four. Frio six point four. So you can never forget how much booze is in there because in Oklahoma fucking you frio. haven't had full strength beer ever. <laughs> I just loved, though, when the Oklahomans were like, we're getting that 6.0 finally, and everyone's like, you do know it goes higher than that, too, Oh, yeah, right? 6.0, oh, yeah, no, that's exactly what I said. I was just like, you know that that's not the limit. <laughs> wait till you have those 11 five yeah. years. Wait till, you, wait till you drink a fucking Imperial Stout aged in whiskey, and it's 12.5%, and you drink one of them, and you're like, oh, fuck. Yeah, that's exactly. Uh, but yeah, so it, it is funny that that the song is just kind of it is us now, where it's just like, 
And the other thing, it was just like, I feel like adults just want to day drink because then they're done. They go to sleep at a regular time. Yeah. And I agree wholeheartedly. I like, I will, I end up staying up late, you know, pretty often, but my body can't handle the old, you know, I'm drinking and continuously drinking and then drinking even harder at the very end of the night and then going to sleep. I will just die. Like, like, like I, I distinctly remember what it was like the first time I had that two day hangover where I woke up the next day and I was like, this is horseshit. (laughs) We had an agreement. I ruined myself and then I pay for it the next day and then we're good. Nope. Headed into the second day. And I was like, this makes me really rethink life choices. My God. Yeah. I was, I was telling the lady about how, uh, back in, she, obviously she didn't know me in college. So, she didn't know what I was capable of back in college. <laughs> and I was just like, no, there were, I drank six to seven nights a week in college. I would go to class on two hours of sleep, either still drunk or hung over. The fact that I was able to do that blows my mind now because now it's, I go out till midnight, have like seven beers and I wake up feeling like shit the next day. Yep. <laughs> like, I, uh, I like to describe, uh, certain things in my college existence too there was one class i had with jay our cousin for those for those at home um we had the same class it was a math class where you do a lot of your homework together and then you take the exams uh so we did our homework together turned it in got the same scores and then we would take the tests and i literally like did the exact same stuff on my test and she gave me a C and she gave J an A because I routinely showed up to our classes in the shit that I wore to the bar the night before with the stamps on my hands. Well, because that was when you used to stay at your ex's, right? Exactly. And so I would just stay at her place, wake up, wear my bar clothes, go to class, and I am convinced that she hated me because of that. And despite having essentially the same shit down on the paper, I got a worse grade. Was that bullshit. reminds me. Someone, someone once told me a story of uh, the. You know, so if you didn't go to Augie, which none of you did, because <laughs> no one from Augie listens to this. But uh, there, we used to. Well, actually, even your grade and beyond, people didn't go out for fucking Ribco Thursdays anymore. So we had a thing called Ribco Thursdays. Ribco was a bar uh, at school, and on Thursdays they'd have like two dollar wells and dollar beers. I think they raised the price. They raised them to, to but, they raised it to a buck, buck twenty five or something. I think it was buck, buck fifty. Yeah, so they raised them. So it used to be a dollar. So you go, you have a ten dollar tab the other night. But you, they put this giant fucking stamp on your hand to get in the bar. And so on Friday, you, if you had the Ribco stamp of shame, people knew you went out to the bars the night before. And I heard that one teacher just like on Friday, just everyone came in. And she goes, everyone show me your hands. And like it so, you know, everyone pulled out the hold out their hands. And if you had a stamp on the top of your hand, you had to stay for a quiz. Everyone else got to leave. Yep. I remember <laughs> when that happened. It was not in my class. Thank God I would have had to stay. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I stayed. Yeah, I would have stayed every time. I, I especially, well, actually, it wouldn't matter because I still remember two semesters in a row I didn't have Friday classes. So I went out Thursday, oh. Friday, Saturday, every weekend, and it was the best. That's perfect. But, I always did it where I had Tuesdays and Thursdays off because, I mean, with track practice. Just day on, day off, day on, day Well, that's the thing. So, like, having track practice, I liked having all those days off. But it made it so I could do whatever I want those off days. But then with having my classes on Fridays, that was always a rough Friday. God. Imagine imagine being able to have the college schedule again. Oh, Ugh. God. The college schedule and the college drinking ability. Like, not yeah, just no. the drinking, the, not the going in, but also waking up the next day and yeah. being like, I'm fine. <laughs> I remember my first hangover when I was at Illinois State. I drank so much, I woke up the next day just like, oh, this is terrible. And I had no idea what it was. I was just like, am I getting sick? And then I realized, nope, I'm hungover. And this is what a hangover is. <laughs> so that's what this is. Yeah, I remember one time when I woke up, because I would usually wake up and be like, oh, no, I'm fine. And there was one time I was like, I just don't feel good. I don't know why. I just don't feel good. I'm like, oh, <laughs> that's what it is. I just kind of feel shitty in every way. That's it. Yeah. That's a hangover. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway. Wow, that was a great tangent. <laughs> that was a great tangent. All right. We're definitely going to have to do another, like, drinking uh, songs episode where – because our – well, the first drinking songs episode we did, we didn't even really have a list because it was episode number two. So yeah. it was just us talking about drinking songs. like And so we're definitely going to have to do that. Maybe what we could do is this year or next – it started next year. For St. Paddy's Day, we do it again 
do another power hour yeah. and we just have it be about drinking songs. Because yeah, if, you, if you haven't, I think, I don't know if we talked about it on the podcast, what we're thinking of doing is doing the same power hours we did before, but we're just going to do it as an episode, but people will be able to obviously have questions and shit because it'll be live, but we're going to treat it as a regular episode. So then even later on, if you aren't live, you can listen to the episode and do the power hour stuff with it. So yeah, that's kind of what we're thinking of doing. So yeah, maybe we got to do another drinking song. We can tell drinking stories and shit like that on the next power hour, but you know, we should do a power hour again before then, because we haven't done one in a while. I think Cinco de Mayo was the last one. <laughs> Yes, but yeah. Anyway, uh, number six, country music's dead. You can take a line from one of mine, we'll make it rhyme and keep the fire from burning out. A room full of talking, don't know what we're talking about. Money is money, doesn't money, goes away, so we keep buying. Easy come and easy go, buddy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So this song, I love it also because it's John Bauman who's in the song with them. Yep. And if you haven't heard John Bauman's music, is it Bauman or Bauman? I had a neighbor named Bauman, so that's how I always say it. But uh, John Bauman or Bauman? I, I don't know. I say but, I say Bauman, but I also have, like you said, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Um. But so this song is about. It's just kind of like the line is, I don't care if country music's dead because it's about these guys who it's like, I don't care if country music's dead. We're still playing it. Like this is the music we're playing. And it's, it's hardly, it's not even really like a serious, um, like protest song. It's not really a protest song as much as it is just kind of like a, we're being us type. Thing. Exactly. It's not, it's not saying like screw country music and what it's turned into. It's more of, we're going to do our thing and yeah. our thing is country music. Exactly, because it's it's more the the country music's dead is just I feel like they're alluding to the fact that the pop shit's taking over, and so the idea of yeah. country music may be dead, but they don't really care because they're making what they do, and that can you can call it whatever the fuck you want. It's they're gonna keep doing it. Yeah, yeah, and it's just a fantastic song. Like we said, definitely check out John Bauman's music. He's amazing. His song "Here We Go" or is it "Here I"? Oh, "Here I Am." Here I am. Is a fantastic fucking song. Yeah, and it's check it out. that song is so good. Yeah. Um, number five, smoke 'em if you got 'em. When I hear John Boy sing, I miss old friends of mine that don't make 'em like they used to do. Now I'm playing for some boys up in Oklahoma, cause they know. This is definitely their most known song, probably. At least, uh, this is the song that introduced me to them. Same. So, yeah. So, I'm guessing this is probably their most popular song. Um, yeah, and it's it's, uh, it's another one, you know, about, you know, essentially about the being on the road. Because, you know, they, they has, yeah. throughout the song, they're talking about different places that they're at. Um, yeah. But I just really love the line, you know, smoke it if you got them, it's a long way from the bottom, shame on me for never learning anything. Like, I just, yeah. it's just, it's upbeat, it's fun, and it's just a great song about, you know, traveling and do, you know, basically living life in the moment and do what you gotta do, just have some fun, whatever. Um, and it's and then got just, the, it's got the very classic kind of country rock song, like the da 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 Exactly. Like it has that, and it's just, it's such a, yeah, it's such an upbeat, catchy song. Like this is one that has come on, it's rare that I can work out to country music, but this is one of those that comes on and it's so upbeat and fast. Like it's one I can listen to in the gym and just still be like, I'm going to run like kind of thing. And yeah, it's, yeah, it's a fantastic song. Um, number four is Steak Night at the Prairie Rose. Down to Steak Night at the Prairie Rose, a cover band from ten to close, and my old man sitting right there next to me. They got the ball. See you 
I love this song. It's it's like one of those story type songs where he's talking about like you know he's talking about how when he was younger his parents got divorced and he had to choose and then he would he was go with his dad to this the Prairie Rose which is like a bar uh, on steak night and hear people play music and just like how that kind of introduced him to the world of country and and how that that's kind of got that's what got him into it was just those nights at this you know the steak night at the prairie rose and i just and his dad would turn to him and say like i'm gonna see you up there someday yeah and then at the end son to do it and i'm pretty sure at the end isn't it like he's he is playing somewhere and he's he's thinking about it or or he's his dad's in the crowd or something like that happens where at the end of the song he is the grown-up age thing i can't remember exactly what the deal is but it's a great song yeah, it's a I yeah, it's such a fantastic song and it, obviously it's the titular song of the newest album. It is a there, titty so. song. It is a titty song. <laughs> titty song by Mike Moonpie. Uh, titty Moonpie. Titty Moonpie. My name is Titty Moonpie and I like country music. Um speaking of country music, I listened to uh I was at the gym and fucking American by Macklemore came on. That's why I had that sarcastic tweet about like pop country fans are so stupid. They probably think the song American by Macklemore's country yeah. <laughs> because it's just, have you ever heard that song? Uh, I don't know. It's actually pretty funny because he sings it like a stereotypical redneck and he's just like, I want, I'm going to, he's like, fuck terrorists. Not I'm going to fuck a terrorist, <laughs> but fuck terrorists. <laughs> And he's like, and then he goes, but, but seriously, if you saw Osama Bin Laden, you would want to give him one in the butt. <laughs> <laughs> it's actually, it's actually a really, it's a really funny song, but, and it's just like, and then like, he'll go away from the mic. He's like, yeah, Romo. <laughs> like, it's, it's actually That's a really funny. funny. Like, I, I don't, yeah, I is definitely funny, have not heard that because now that you describe like, no, I, I would remember that. Yeah. It's, it's, I, I definitely actually suggest it's from like that first album before even like his popular songs came out it's the same oh. album that has and we danced <laughs> and we cried like it's that one but had a really 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 good time that's such a great that's a jam that is a fucking jam i love that song <laughs> that brings me back to college oh yeah oh college such a fun time what a what a, a time fat steve <laughs> uh <laughs> Anyway, number number three it's funny is because it's true. <laughs> yeah. I actually I actually showed uh I showed Megan a picture of me in college and she's like, Yeah, you've definitely lost weight. And I'm like, Yeah, I was a fucking blend. That's a really nice way of God damn you were fat, boy. God damn you were fucking fat. But uh yeah. Anyway, <laughs> number three is one is the whiskey. There ain't no reason. In here tonight, the same smoky bar, the same drunken fight. But I've got my reasons for not staying. One is the whiskey, and the other one's gone. Uh, oh, fuck. So, yeah, yeah. We, uh, this is one of those fantastic songs. It's obviously a breakup song because it's one of those, you know, I don't want to say cliche, but it is, a, it is a song you've heard in a way where it's just like, she's gone, so I drink type yes. songs. Yes. But uh, the way it's written is so great. Is like I'm only here for two reasons. One is the whiskey, and one is because she's gone. Like, and it's fantastic. Paused. My, paused I him. know it's fucking. I tried to make it go away, and it won't come back. <laughs> <laughs> well, goodbye. I guess we'll talk. Uh, <laughs> I got a, a fantasy football notification that I tried to make it go away, and now it's taking me to fantasy football, and I don't want a fantasy football. I have the game on. I can see what's happening. All right, we're back. <laughs> Uh, um, but yeah the uh the that style of song the the i'm drinking because i'm sad and alone now is one that has been done before but this is a really well-written song like you said yeah it's It's, just yeah the the lyrics are the lyrics make it great yes it's just a fantastic yeah um but what also is fantastic is number two beaches of balak below blah 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 the beaches of balussi got the best of me Got 
Beaches of Mississippi. Um, Beaches of Biloxi. Be- <laughs> uh, no, I, I love this. This is probably, I mean, it, the way that I'd ranked them, I feel like this is what I put higher as favorite song off that album, two, or maybe not. I don't know. Three, I love this song. It's three it, uh, years. Oh, well, son of a bitch. I mean, no, like as far as off of the that album. Oh, it's your highest off the yes. newest album. That's what I was thinking, because I love the sound of it, and it's, you know, Beaches of Biloxi. Apparently, there's a bunch of casinos in Biloxi, I had no idea. I've never been there. Um, yeah. But then the whole song about him, you know, like hoping that he can not lose his ass because the casinos always seem to win and he wants to try to not fucking lose all of his money at the beaches of Biloxi. Uh, and it's just a, got a, a tremendous sound. Yeah, it's such a, yeah, it's, yeah, it's good. <laughs> um, true it's it's just nice because it's one of those like it's a story song type thing uh, where it's yeah it's one of the where you're probably never going to be in that situation but it's still kind of relatable in a way if i ever go to biloxi i'll be thinking about how there's casinos here apparently <laughs> yeah but anyway number one is our first unanimous in i don't know a couple weeks maybe forever i don't know i don't know what the last ever. unanimous one was but uh, number one is I Don't Love You. Cause I don't love you, it's too hard to say. And I don't need you, it's a lie. I used to think about you every day. Now you barely even cross my mind. I don't know who sings this with him. Do you know? I don't. I was thinking about that. I should have fucking her, looked that her up. Her voice, her voice is so familiar that I just don't fucking know. Let me see if I can find it. Nope, nope, nope. See I who finds find it first. It. See who finds it first. No. I'll just keep looking. No, no, I'm gonna look at first. I'm gonna find it. I'm gonna find it. Uh, 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 uh. Dead radio. Dead radio. Radio. Carson McCone. Is it really? Yeah. Oh, shit. Carson McCone. It is. Yeah, yeah Carson McCone, Hell she's yeah. one that we've talked about before. She is fucking phenomenal. Uh, so that's and why, I, and that's why she sounded so familiar because her album yeah. came out literally. What was that like two weeks ago? A week or a two week ago. Or yeah, ago. And, and we were listening to it because it was tremendous. That's why it sounded so familiar. Yeah. That's awesome. I've listened her song Dram Shop Gal. I listened to it a while ago. Listen to the one from the EP because honestly, I don't think the one from the album is that great. But uh, yeah, her. Yeah, I, that's why her voice was so familiar. Carson McCone is fantastic. But this, yeah, so it's a well also. Oh, yeah, we mentioned that it was John Vaughn on the one. So, yeah, it's the second duet by them that we have on the top. And I think it might just be the only other duet they even have. But uh, it's just this amazing uh, song where it's just like, I need you, but I don't love you type thing. Yeah. I can't the lyric the, exactly. Well, yeah, the, the lyric but... is, I, it's just so beautiful the way that he's he's talking, like trying to explain throughout the song at the beginning about why they should break up and he doesn't love them. And so he says, I don't love you is too hard to say. But then he says like, but I don't think about you anymore. And mm-hmm. so it's a, it's just a really well-written song for anyone who's been in a, a dying relationship situation. It's like, wow, that's profound and and like really well-written and really heartbreaking. Um, and then when it comes like full circle at the end of the song, um, and then, you know, he says, like, I love you. Does he say, like, I love you is hard to say, and but you're all I think about. And so it, it just, like, comes to a conclusion of he kind of didn't realize what he had in the moment, and now he has regret. But then also throughout the song, the, you know, I don't love you is too hard to say, but I don't, you know, I don't think about you anymore. It's just, yeah. it's <clears throat> really depressing, but really beautiful and such a great song. 